So we got to get down to brass tacks. Not that um, Paul versus Dennis wasn't insane in its own way. UFC Vegas 81 was pretty good too. We'll talk about the main event and all the other stuff later. But I think the biggest story of the uh, the past week is that USADA and the UFC come January 1st, 2024 will be splitting and that partnership will be no more. And a lot of different places where we could start this conversation. We'll get into our opinions in a little bit. But first, I wanted to tell everybody all the facts of uh, this situation, just so everybody knows both sides and knows that like we're not putting our own bias into that. And like everybody can think of the situation what they will, and then me and you can actually talk about what we think. So, in order, I guess. Uh, apparently, on Monday there was like a final talk about contract renewal after 2023 for USADA and the UFC. Um, the UFC informed, I think, USADA that it was going in a different direction. And USADA apparently did not take that very well, in particular their CEO, Travis Tigert, as uh, Hunter Campbell said in their rebuttal press conference. But I'm going to just talk about how this unfolded in the media. So on Wednesday... In the morning, it comes out that Conor McGregor is back in the USADA testing pool. Big news because it means his six months finally starts. It means, like, when are, when is he going to be fighting? And then just a few hours after that, USADA puts out a press release saying that their relationship with the UFC will be over and it's become, quote, untenable because of the uh, Conor McGregor situation. And in the interest of full disclosure, this is going to take a second, but I am going to read their press release. And then that way, so like when we talk about the UFC's rebuttal, people will know like what they're referencing in case they haven't seen this before because it was pretty bad. Like gave the UFC PR team a lot to deal with, don't you think? But uh, I'm going to read that real quick. So this is from October 11th, 2023. We can confirm that Conor McGregor has re-entered the USADA testing pool as of Sunday, October 8th, 2023. We have been clear and firm with the UFC that there should be no exception given by the UFC for McGregor to fight until he has returned two negative tests and been in the pool for at least six months. The rules also allow USADA to keep someone in the testing pool longer before competing based on their declarations upon entry in the pool and testing results. Unfortunately... We do not currently know whether the UFC will ultimately honor the six-month or longer requirement because as of January 1st, 2024, USADA will no longer be involved with the UFC anti-doping program. Despite a positive and productive meeting about a contract renewal in May of 2023, the UFC did an about-face and informed USADA on Monday, October 9th that it was going in a different direction. We are disappointed for UFC athletes who are independent contractors who rely on our independent gold standard global program to protect their rights to a clean, safe, and fair octagon. The UFC's move imperils the immense progress made within the sport under USADA's leadership. The relationship between USADA and UFC became untenable given the statements made by UFC leaders and others questioning USADA's principled stance that McGregor not be allowed to fight without being in the testing pool for at least six months. One UFC commentator, talking about Joe Rogan, in case you guys haven't seen his commentary on this. One UFC commentator echoed this, recently declaring that USADA should not oversee the UFC program since we held firm to the six-month rule involving McGregor and since we do not allow fighters without an approved medical basis to use performance-enhancing drugs like experimental, unapproved peptides or testosterone for healing or injuries simply to get back in the octagon. Fighters' long-term health and safety, in addition to a fair and level playing field, are more important to USADA than short-term profits at the expense of clean athletes. USADA is proud of the work we've done over the past eight years to clean up the UFC, and we will continue to provide our unparalleled service to UFC athletes through the remainder of our current contract, which ends December 31st, 2023. As always, we will continue to uphold the rights and voices of clean athletes in all sport. <laughs> it's a mouthful, that's for sure. Now, there's a lot. I guess we could start the conversation here. So, I'm going to say this. We'll go with Conor McGregor first because that seems to be the reason why USADA thinks that uh, thinks that this partnership needed to end. But before we do, actually, let me say that the UFC has came out 
said that USADA's story is completely false, garbage they even called it, demanded an apology and retraction by Thursday, and will use legal action if need be. So USADA since has walked back the Conor McGregor stuff, and um, the, the UFC has been adamant that no special requests were ever made for McGregor. Like I said, uh, USADA corroborates that. And USADA will be replaced by Drug Free Sport, which also drug tests MLB, NBA, NFL. And it will be run by a guy named George Pyro, who is the lead interrogator of the Saddam Hussein <laughs> investigation, which I thought was a crazy detail. But also is a guy who's trained jiu-jitsu, knows the sport, loves the UFC. So it's good that we actually have someone who's like an MMA guy who's going to be running the anti-doping program. And, uh, yeah, so let's, um, let's get into this. So Conor McGregor, this all kind of starts with him, right? He had that brutal leg injury, UFC 264, and it's speculated that he's probably used PEDs to recover in some way. And USADA obviously wants him back in the pool before he's going to get this fight booked with Michael Chandler against anybody, but... If McGregor used PDs to recover from an injury, which is, like I said, is up in the air, it's speculated in the MMA community, I would say. Should we be judging him for that due to the nature of the sport? So, now that we now that we brought the Drug Free International, as which obviously you just mentioned runs all the other major sports, kind of like brings that that we're because you we've i think we've seen it plenty of times with uh foot nfl nba mlv like you know players that they they that they will that they will do this to recover faster from an injury like pretty much especially if you're a star player like you know conor mcgregor obviously is for the ufc so um and it's weird in that case too because obviously like the the these other major sports are a lot more just numbers based and like you pull up the stat pages or you look on the back of the card or whatever and then that gives you like that broad of like idea of who this player really was and then i you see it a lot like i mean with baseball obviously if we're gonna take that now into play like you've seen it with the whole barry bonds uh hall of fame situation in which case you'll have one side that's gonna argue like yeah he should be in and then the others are like, well, you know, he played in this era, and, like, it clouds all of that. And, like, whereas with MMA, like, there's not really, like, because for, for, for MLB, there's, like, a whole, like, era that they literally tab, the steroid era with, like, MMA. It's, like, there's it's not... It's been that yeah, way. Yeah, like, exactly. before you saw it, it was, like, the Wild West. Like, I mentioned TRT Vitor yeah. at one point before. Like, that was something that existed. He even blinded Michael Bisping in one eye. And, um... MMA, like, as you mentioned baseball before, I thought this was, like, a good comparison because baseball, like, here's, like, the argument that you could make, right? Because in competition, it's obviously much more dangerous to have an uneven playing field in MMA because of all the different things that could happen physically. But in baseball, you're just playing a sport, right? But in terms of training, baseball, I would say, probably isn't as rigorous as MMA is. And, like, the beating that you're putting on your body in and out of the cage in MMA, I feel like there should be some sort of middle ground for people who are recovering from like a serious injury like McGregor or serious surgery. And I'm not going to talk like I'm some sort of like genius medical major who knows what the answers are because I don't fully understand all of that. But that seemed to be like one big problem with USADA. Like it was very black and white and it screwed over a lot of people. Like there were yeah. false positives like... Sean O'Malley and Nate Diaz had those weird situations. I mean, you had, um, what, what was the other one we were just talking about? It was, uh, oh, the Picogram thing with John Jones before UFC 232. Like, having to explain that whole debacle and how that John Jones was even allowed to fight. Like, And that kind of just brings us to the next part because I mentioned to you before the show, like, USADA having this, like, holier-than-thou attitude in their press release is crazy to me with all of the problems that they've had over the years. And this isn't me saying that like they weren't maybe being truthful about some things. Although, like I said, they did walk back the Conor McGregor stuff, but 
especially like when you're starting to walk things back, especially after acting like you're the voice of clean athletes and like this gold standard to then admit that, yeah, this part isn't true. I just rubs me the wrong way. And like in the beginning, I was definitely a bit nervous because the situation with the UFC wasn't clear yet. Like if USADA was going to be replaced because this really blindsided everybody. And then, you know, now that the UFC has come in and has announced that drug free sport international is going to be alongside, like it makes you feel a little better. But in the beginning I was nervous because, you know, you, the UFC sets the whole standard for MMA. Like they're the, they're number one. Everybody's going to follow what they do. And this was picking up like mainstream media attention because to the outside world, to the casual fans, it looks like the UFC doesn't give a shit about drug testing. Thankfully, we know that's not the case because of all the work they've put in to replace USADA with this new program. But man, like this is just a total disaster, I think, for both parties, no matter how you slice it, just because... The more casual fans definitely aren't going to understand this enough. And maybe them making that comparison to the other pro sports with uh, Drug Free Sport International will help a little bit. But, yeah, man, this yeah, is just something kind that of we didn't what, need. That's kind of like the parallel I was trying to make before with, um, you know, the whole Barry Bond situation and all that. Because, you know, I think especially with MMA, then, like, well, and then I guess you could say with baseball too, since it's every day, it's such a long season. Like, it's really just, what have you done for me lately? And so, like, if, you know... When you mentioned the numbers too, because, like, you meant, like, Barry Bonds, for example, like you said, like, 762 home runs. That's mm-hmm. the record, but people put a stain on it. With MMA, there's no steroid era like that, because mm-hmm. before you saw it, it was, like I said, the Wild West, and... Even since you saw it, I would I don't think anyone would say that the sport's been completely clean. And I don't even know if that's possible, but I would I wouldn't even say it's like a wouldn't even say it's at ninety percent really, which would be like a reasonable number. But um I just think that overall this was like a bad situation for both parties for in terms of PR and like the UFC, especially in like a little lull lately with these fight night cards that are just at the apex with not a crazy yeah. amount of attention, for this to just be mm. bam in the middle of the week, that that was definitely just yeah, a PR yeah, nightmare. We'll, we'll like we'll literally get into like what was like a awesome fight that they the yeah. UFC just had and their recent uh, and apex this has to card. overshadow it though. It's just too important. Yeah, especially the way that you saw it as this came out of nowhere like that. And like I said, the holier than thou thing is a bit much in my opinion but you know fans who were mad about this at first it was understandable but i think now that the ufc has actually announced that there's going to be a backup plan that like there is in place and this wasn't just them saying like you know what we want conor mcgregor in the octagon let's just do whatever's possible now we know that i would say probably the truth is somewhere in the middle but more towards the ufc side especially if they're threatening legal action and USADA bending doesn't help their case, but overall, I wouldn't say this is the end of the world because USADA has had problems in the past, like we've mentioned, and mm. there's going to be a replacement. So for people who were panicking at first, I would say let's see where we are in a little bit, like towards the end of next year, and we'll see what the fighters think of it. We'll see what the media thinks of it because that was another thing I thought was cool. They said that there's going to be a way for media fans and anyone to see who was tested, when, what positive test comes up. And I'm like, that's insane if that's something that we could actually see at some point. But um, yeah, man, I I don't really have much left. If you uh, I don't know if you have anything to add. No, yeah, I mean, like the fallout will be interesting, I guess, and whatnot. And, you know, I guess like, Throughout all of this, you've pretty much gotten, like, confirmation of Conor McGregor's return. So, yeah. there's that. Like, a true new era in UFC. <laughs> I'll ask you this. <laughs> over under six months. <laughs> oh, hey, you Jesus. gotta wonder, dude, man. Do I they mean, hold I it? have, I feel, yeah, dude, I feel like I have every right to be, like, over, you know? I, like, because it's agree. just been so long, so. You want to know why, though, I think over? I mean, we're at UFC 294 next weekend. Six more months, UFC 300. 
I think that that's what they want. I think they want McGregor on the front of that pay-per-view, and I don't blame them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would love to see it. I think that that's going to be a mega card, and I know that they want him on it. Like, it just has to be. So, speaking of mega cards, let's get to UFC Vegas 81, and uh, let's talk about the main event a little bit. As you mentioned, it was a pretty great fight. Edson Barboza defeats Sadiq Yusuf, unanimous decision. Good scorecards. Did you agree with this? 49-46, and then two 48-46s. Because um, I think two of the judges gave Sadiq a 10-8 in round one, which I thought was pretty warranted. Like, I'm glad with a fight like this, where it was back and forth in a way, and there was like a big comeback, and there were debatable rounds... I thought it was good that like the scorecard kind of reflected what we actually saw because we've definitely seen fights like this end in draws or weirder outcomes. But yeah. I thought the right guy won. The right rounds were scored for the right people. So glad to report that at least. But what did you think of this awesome fight, honestly? Yeah, dude, just that's pretty much all you can really say for it. I mean, like even at this point in Edson Barbosa's career, like he's still just just as smooth of a striker as you get in the octagon and like the real i guess the real thing is like dude like if this was in front of a crowd this was like dude this that place would have been definitely rocking for this one and it's like you wonder why this one wasn't in front of a crowd because it's not like this card was terrible there were there were some sleeper fights on here honestly i wouldn't even call some of them sleepers i mean we had just it was incredible man i'm gonna look it up right now because i don't want to like butcher any of the uh any of the other athletes, but I know Viv, uh, Vivian Araujo won. Oh my God, that's right. That Jonathan Martinez fight with the leg kicks against Adrian Yanez. Michelle Pereira with the middleweight knockout. Good to see him moving up in weight I mean, finally. Yeah there's, a, yeah, there's a lot of names to keep your eye out for on this card. So. A lot of young people too. I know uh, C-Rod versus Cameron Simon. That was a Interesting one coming in. Obviously, C-Rod got the win there. Terrence McKinney with that crazy knee. But main event-wise, man, I yeah. thought that one... Like like you said, it should have been in front of a crowd. That fight was a classic, Pretty especially... Nice. I mean, how about Edson Barboza still coming out here? 145, even. Coming back after a first round like that. I mean, I thought he was going to be out of there after at least the second or the third. And then he yeah, came dude. back midway I mean, the this second. guy is just racked up like so much damage in his career especially at this point and he Definitely just finds points. a way to just stay in it and just fucking go out on his shield every time so this is a tough dude to get a win yeah like that. dude i want i you know you know it'll, it'll be interesting because like you wonder how much like truly there is left of uh edson barbosa it's like who's gonna be that last fight you know so or when honestly when yeah. will it be but I was super impressed. I mean, judging by that performance, it doesn't look like he's done yet. Yeah, you know that's what I good. Mean? That's good. Especially, sure. I thought he was going to win by knockout after that spinning heel kick. It looked like a repeat of the Terry Adam one for, well, not really, because that one's just unbeatable. <laughs> kind of like we were talking about the Joaquin Buckley knockout last week with the uh, spinning. He, or, what did we call it? it was jump spinning back kick? <laughs> like, similar, yeah, jump similar spinning to that. Heel kick. Yeah, I don't think Barboza's uh, knockout over Adam is ever going to be beaten by him. I think that's yeah. a tough one to follow. But this one, either way, great comeback. Good moments for Barboza in this fight. I think he definitely added to his highlight reel. Yeah, dude, we got to get Edson Barboza back in front of the crowd. Let's hope so, man. You could only hope. But. A fight that you almost wish wasn't in front of a crowd was Logan Paul versus Dylan Danis. We're not going to spend too much time on this just because it's not worth it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know. I mean, I'll literally read the note verbatim that I put on the outline. An embarrassment for all parties and an absolute joke and disgrace to boxing, which is genuinely my only thought. So, <laughs> the floor is open to you if you have anything to add. It yeah, man. Pathetic. Like, so... I think the thing is with these two, they're really just so already clouded up with, you know, what's going to get them the most clicks and attention and fucking, you know, waves in the headlines and shit. And just, you know, at first, like, Dylan Dennis, like, okay, kind of seems like he has something. Like, he's, you know, he's really going to the lowest of the freaking lows <laughs> to get under Logan Paul's skin and, like... At this rate, man, like, oh, man. this better be, like, this better legit be, like, a fucking, 
an absolute war in ev in any way that, between these two. And of like the closer and closer, the longer it just dragged, you know, the build up and whatnot, the more and more it's just like this is not worth anybody's time. Like before they even get into the ring, you know, the already the uncertainty you get with whether or not I would have rather just watched Mike Perry versus Logan Paul, honestly. Would have been a better um, fight. <laughs> but like for oh, man, to like even drag this you know man it was yeah, just it's bad it was so rough i could it's yeah, like beating yeah. a dead horse at <laughs> this point i had to i had to just reprieve from it you know especially like it's freaking you know got this going on the same night as ufc vegas you know this ufc vegas card and like it's just it was just worth the glance you know i i go on i go on twitter and then i just I you pretty much just to like, yeah, dude, because I see trending in combat sports and all the word says is embarrassing oh, and I already know what it's about yeah. and it's like, you know, just for even like, dude, for this dude Dylan Dennis to even like go for that, for that, for that, for that neck choke, whatever it was, dude, he just went straight into like jujitsu mode. He went for the guillotine and completely <laughs> missed. He got hit again on the ground, and then that's when, dude, and then that's how when funny, all the how bad do you have to be to get hit with ground and pound in a boxing match? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's a jujitsu guy. <laughs> like what was what is happening? Uh, that was so pathetic, man. Dude, I honestly, I would have just. I would have oh, just liked to just see them, like, just, dude, fuck the boxing match. At this point, just fucking brawl. Like, actually just brawl and, like, fucking just... Because, like, dude, there was more... It seemed like there was more action, like, before the fight. When the fucking, you know, whatever Logan Paul did to Dylan Dennis. To, and then Dylan Dennis takes the microphone. He yeah. hits him with the microphone. And then... Did you see our guy Ariel's uh, quick exit? <laughs> that was fantastic, yeah, dude. Man, dude. If I can find a video of that, I'm for you sure freaking, putting it in there. It was, it was, some, it was some smooth man it, it was pretty amazing good good on him for that Shout yeah out man to and then yeah to <laughs> that whole entire thing to freaking even just get in the ring afterwards and then freaking get the the interview with logan paul i mean like yeah hats off ariel because i don't know who the hell else was gonna fucking deal with that i mean as bullshit. he says <laughs> as, he, as he says scenes dude scenes. <laughs> just absolute uh, scenes oh my god but yeah man i mean like but you know yeah. Dylan Dennis just ruined everything, and then, like, instead of just them just brawling it out, just saying, fuck it, everything else, throwing all caution, like, everybody just gets into the ring, all the security, all the, it's just a whole, just... Uh -huh. I think a guy, I think a guy like him is only out, really, for the money, and I can't blame him for that, but at the same time, this is, like, the type of person that, like, people are propping up and give a shit about then like what does that say about the world that people care about this and that this is actually like something that mattered in a lot of people's eyes and you know i've talked about it i think it was like I think, who is dylan danis supposed to fight it was like a year ago i think i said like i'm done talking about him until he actually gets in the octagon the cage a ring something because oh he would keep God. pulling out yeah. And I was just like, why do they even bother giving him the time? Like, you know he's not going to fight, so just wait until he does. And then you actually have something to talk about. And now that we do, I almost think it would have been more worth it for Dylan to not fight and just keep pulling out like he has been because I think that this was almost the worst possible outcome. <laughs> and yeah, he might be trending, but it's all negative, and that might be what he wants. But hey, man, what a way to live. And like I said, that's an interesting person that society has chosen to care about because i don't know about you but i could not care less and if it wasn't for the if it wasn't for the whole world talking about this i probably wouldn't even have brought it up so yeah <laughs> seems like that, you. that's that's the bottom line right there yeah it's a shame but next week we're gonna have uh we have a great ufc card new fights on there i mean we have Kamara Usman fighting Hamzat Kimaev in the co-main, and now Volk versus, uh, I was about to say Charles Oliveira, versus Islam Makhachev in the main event. Big rematch. The fact that Usman and Volk are both coming in on uh, 10 and 11 days notice, like, respectively, hats off to them, man. Insane. Because I, I cannot wait. I'm almost more excited for this version of the card than I was for the last one, just because of all the unknowns. But... 
Either way, we'll be back next week to talk about it. So we'll see you all then.